Hey guys, how's it going? Burstway here, uh, bringing you another video. And this is gonna be um, KT up against IG at the uh, the Rift Rivals event. So it's obviously LCK, LPL, and LMS. Um, this was from July, so that's quite a while away, a while ago, um, over two months. But, you know, I, I hadn't actually had any sort of look at it, so I thought that I would. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the match. Um, Again, if you want me to VOD review any game in particular in the future, just hit me with a DM or comment below or something like that. But without further ado, guys, let's get into the match. So, sorry, let's mute the sound. Right, so looking at the two comps, we have Jace against Ryze. That's obviously going to be heavily Jace favored. We have Aatrox up against Aurelia. So this is obviously when Aatrox is still being played. I don't know if he still is. I haven't seen him in a while, so probably not. Um, Aatrox versus Aurelia. Aatrox should just shit on her before Triforce. Uh, and then Velkoz Shen up against Varus Morgana. Uh, that should probably go in favor of the Velkoz Shen. Super high base damages, super high ability based damage, and all in. Um, so if they can do some sort of a Shen, like Taunt Flash Ignite onto the, the Varus. Um, obviously he has Cleanse, so maybe the Morgana would be a better target. But ultimately, I, I feel like all three lanes go heavily in favor of KT. Um, or I suppose the LCK. And then the LPL, they're looking to scale, right? They've got Ryze that wants to just kind of wave clear and farm up. They have, of course, the Aurelia that just wants to get to her Triforce and then, you know, sort of split push and just relax and maybe eliminate the Velkos later on. And then you have the Virus Morgana, which is just kind of like a team fight, right? You've got a nice engage with the Virus or even 2v2, 3v3, things like this. Um, you got a good pick with the Morgana, etc. In terms of uh, who I think will win, I think the LTK will win. I think the individual players are better. I think that the... Um, Holy crap. Well, the fans disagree, but I think this was in China, so... <coughs> yeah, I mean, ultimately... Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think the lanes are just too strong from from uh, LCK or KT. I'll just call it KT and IG. Um, so yeah, I think KT are going to take it. In terms of jungle path thing, we've seen, obviously, the Gragas uh, start his chickens and then work his way bot side so Juani started her red worked her way top side I think this is a mistake from Gragas. Because in terms of who has gank priority, obviously the Gragas does, but... You must realize that Sejuani's going to prioritize topside. Like, what's more of a catalyst? Jason Rise or Velko Shen versus uh, uh, Virus Morgana? I feel like the Rise is just so much easier to gank for the Sejuani. Because he's gonna be he's gonna be wanting to like push. He's gonna be walking out. I mean, I understand why Gragas thinks that Sejuani would start bot. Um, but yeah, so it's a bit unfortunate. Obviously, if Gragas knew Sejuani started red, he would have mirrored. Because even though he has gank priority, he doesn't have the lane priority. Um, so he probably just thought that that Sejuani would start top side, which I think is a fair assumption. Okay, so obviously Ryze wasn't expecting it either. Okay, he's going pretty low. I don't I don't understand this from Chinese players. They always kind of do it. It's like they're dead anyway, but they blow their summoners and they like blow their ultimate and they do all this this stuff. It's like it doesn't really make sense to me. Okay. So Greg is heading top side, so Joanny looking for the repeat gank. Ryze kinda knows. Yeah, Ryze. So just the thing is top laners will play aggressive when they have flash, but if they don't, they're not going to. So I think that was a bad play from Sejuani. The only re the only way that Sejuani play would work is if it's mind games. So like Ryze's like, oh, you know, because it's such a bad idea to gank me, I'm gonna play aggressive because whatever, but um honestly I feel like at this level, like that kind of mentality will never work because historically LCK players don't really respect LPL teams that much so you know if something is obvious they will do the obvious thing um because it's obvious because they're hoping what will happen is the chinese player will be like hey i can get an advantage if sejuani's not here by shoving the wave so i'm going to assume sejuani's not here 
But obviously here, you know, Rice feeling it out. Now Jace knows that Gragas is here. Um, Gragas waited. Would that have made a difference? <coughs> so Gragas passes the ward in Tribush. It might be hard to know because, well, Sejuani would have placed when she was there probably. But here there's clearly a fight happening. And Gragas here, the reason you wait is because you expect Jace to turn. But because it's warded, he's not going to turn obviously. Um, so I think it should have been fairly obvious because Sejuani tried to gank top before that um, that bush would be warded. So if I was Gragas, I would say Gragas should just run straight in. Like he shouldn't even go down here. He should just go like up here like that. Let me get the epic pen out that's invisible. Am I right, ladies and gentlemen? Um, so he should just keep going here. He would probably be like here. E-flash. Blows the flash from um, Jace, but maybe kills him. Maybe not. But I don't think they could have killed him, but I think they could have definitely blown his flash for flash, which would have been good. To, like, you know, equalize with the, the Rise who has no flash. There's the taunt, but Morgana's shield coming in. <coughs> Morgana's really good against, like, Pike and Shen and stuff. Um, it's another thing, is I learned that yesterday from my, um, one of my supports. Like, from my teams that I coach. Well, I didn't, I, mean, I didn't learn it, but, like, he, he confirmed it, right? So that's something I learned. Okay. So we're just chilling. Alright, so in terms of what we expected, everything we expected has happened. The main difference is that Varus is so ahead in farm. Like, we knew he'd get ahead in farm, but we thought, you know, the kill potential from Velko Shen would be higher. Um, but so far, IG have done a really good job of uh, not letting that happen. So basically the way it works is Varus will just go for some farm and then hard engage from uh, KT. But obviously maybe the Morgana is just too much. Um, the only real way I can see it working is if the Velkoz engages the Morgana, Morgana blows Black Shield, is then popped by the, the AP damage, and then Shen, uh, Shen goes in. Then they have no damage. So I think it's actually... I feel like the lane from KT Deft is completely shut down by this uh, Morgana in the lane. But in team fights, Shen's still going to be useful to go into the Aatrox or the, the Jace. And Velkoz is still going to be useful just for like massive team fight damage. Because remember, even if Velkoz is like 0 2, he still has super high base damage. Now we see a bit of a sneaky sneak by the Gragas. He manages to actually get there. Smeb doesn't know. Yeah, he does. So he almost doesn't know. And I feel like this is again Gragas over hesitating. There was a moment there, like here, where he should have just gone straight in. Like. That distance is E. That's an E right there. Like here, you stand still to use the shock blast. Gragas should be coming out of the bush and stunning him right now. This is the moment. Gragas over hesitates. Jace runs away. That's it. So that, that was a bit of a mistake, but it wasn't punished at all. Okay, same thing again. And now you have to E. You have to E right now. No, he doesn't do it. <clears throat> yep, he waited too long. Go. 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 Go! Yeah, that's that's Gregus's fault. Because they could have chained it with the Rise WCC. Definitely a mistake from Gregus. Like, he was channeling the W, obviously, but he could have done that earlier, and also, there was time, even at the time that he channeled the W, he was still, he still had moments to go in that he didn't, so. <coughs> okay, so we see the engage from bot, but that Morgana shield is super strong. They're still winning the trades, like, don't get me wrong, but the CS differential is pretty bad. Like, obviously, Virus is going to outscale, so pretty bad. Now, Gragas repeat ganks top, but I don't even know if he wins this. Oh, he got level 6. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Now, I'm going to assume Jace didn't have his E, because if I'm Jace right now, maybe he doesn't have mana for it, but isn't your E free? I'm looking this up. Better to get the facts right. Um, also, reading comments number 3 uploading at the moment. 
Oh, I forgot the website. .wikia.com. Yeah, I was almost there. Um, let's have a look at Jace. There we go. Okay, Jace, Defender of Tomorrow. I didn't know that was his thing. Okay, to the skies. Uh, what? Oh, there's the hammer and then the, the cannon is separate tabs. I didn't notice that. Okay, so the to the skies is 40, 40, and 55. So that's probably why you didn't use it. And the merc cannon is a lot more. Yeah, it's a lot more. Okay, so that makes sense. So yeah, it, is, it has got a mana cost of about 50. I think he's got less than 50. It makes sense. Because, yeah, if, if Jace is, like, high mana here, Gragas is dead. Wait, wait, wait. So Jace's super low health and mana doesn't back. That's why he's dead. He didn't back. <coughs> he didn't back twice. He could have backed... He could have backed here after that wave. He could have backed and just let it. He greeds for one more wave. Oh, that's... that's Yeah, that's just Jace's fault. Yeah. No, it's, it's not even about, like, it's, that's the thing in League of Legends that people don't realize, is almost every situation, there is some form of outplay, or some way to get out of it. Like, if you're just farming normally under tower, and then you die, generally there's there's a reason for it that's a mistake from you. So it'll be something like, you know, you didn't dodge the abilities, or you, you know, you, you died twice early game, and that's why they're so strong. Um, but here, like, I was like, oh, it must be, you know, that Jace can kill the Gragas. But no, the outplay here is simply not going for this extra wave because if there's five, you know, six minions on your team, six minions on their team, the wave's going to freeze in the middle. You don't need to clear the, the next wave. He, just, he was just greedy and now he's dead. And he might say that's fine because, you know, the extra, what is it, like, you know, one wave. So let's say 120. Let's just be generous. Say extra 150 on Jace is worth more than the extra 300 on Gragas. I don't agree with this. Um, also, now you're going to get to the lane later because you don't have TP. I think this is a mistake from Jay staying for that extra wave. I think staying in general was pretty pretty greedy, but it was actually okay. But the extra wave is what did it. So okay, so we see this all in that even though they're so far down in CS, almost twenty CS down, they still win the all in, and that's just the threat of the, the Shen uh, Shen Velkos. So they're just chilling, they're farming. Here we go. This is it. So do they go for the Morgana or the Varus? Ah! So that's how you play around the lane. Obviously. Uh, it should have been... So it's literally human error. The way that you win this lane is human error. Or, or outplay. So you have to pretend to be going for the Varus, but actually go for the Morgana. So it's just a mind game. So it's a 50-50. And look, you see how Velkos immediately throws onto the Varus? Because it's, it's one of two options. Either the Shen Torn... Oh, that makes sense because it's double taunt, essentially, or double CC. Is you throw the CC on both of them, and then whoever they shield, they get the other one. That is interesting. So, you know, for example, if Morgana had shielded herself, then Varus would have just died to the all-in from Volkos anyway. So that's the strength of the lane. See, and I've learned something else. People say I don't learn things. There you go. Oh, Volkos, help him out. Volkos, you boosted! Volkos! What are you doing, Deft? Help him out, Volkos. So here in the 2v2, okay, what should happen is if you've got 2v2 and one guy's getting focused and he has lower health than you, what Deft should do, you know, fuck it. We're not going to try the epic pen because that never works. Okay. So what should happen here is... Volko should go like this and just like attack with auto attacks and no cooldowns, unfortunately, but still auto attacks and, and things like this and just be like pounding down because you have what, 67 and he probably has one, two, three, four, five, so maybe like 500 health. So you only have to hit him like 10 times and he's dead. Okay. 
So let's go. So you walk up here and, and also you should already be here. So, so let's say this is one order now. Okay. And then just keep in mind the orders. So you just do one, 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 and then you, you do it for two and a half and he has 0 0.6 attack speed. So two and a half times 0 0.6 maths help. Um, three fifths is like 1.5. There you go. One and a half attacks. So that's like, Yikes! That's like 100 damage, so that's 100 damage there, plus 67, 200, 250, it'd be close, it'd be pretty close. Um, and then let's see what actually happens. So, imagine, okay, so, so here, you know, you hit one auto, hit two autos, hit three autos, hit four autos, plus that Q that could have easily hit if you were closer. Oops. <clears throat> so you see the distance here. Okay. If Volkos was standing like here. All right. So for example, you see what I mean? Like if he's standing here, just dead. That's a dead virus under there. So I think, yeah, definitely should have passed differently. So right now, like he should be, he's standing like here. He should probably be like here. And all this shit of him like pathing down and all that stuff, it was just completely unnecessary because you could have just been autoing and then you queue. And then do you have your abilities back up yet? Yeah, you have your W back up. You could have killed him. Could have killed the virus. So that's a mistake from Deft, 100%. <coughs> we can carry on, though. Definitely a mistake from Deft. Okay. So right now, Jace is still up, um, both inherently and also in terms of uh, gold. <coughs> I mean, in terms of like spent gold and, and useful items and things, because the champions themselves, level 8, level 8, uh, level 8, level 7, even more, but it'll be level 8 rise. But yeah, I think uh, also Jace has TP, so he could TP and be up half a wave, or he could not TP and have the presence. And that's the thing, every time you TP to lane, you're giving up the potential to gank. So... If you want to just shit on your lane, like in solo queue, you want to just shit on your lane, get XP, win win games, just TP to your lane every time. Um, but just remember that every time you TP, you're um, you're losing the potential to gank. But also every time you don't TP, you're losing half a wave. So every time you, you TP to like bot lane for a fight, you're losing half a wave, which is like 60, 70 gold, right? Depending on cannon. So, um, and also most of the times you back, you back on cannon. So... If you, if you TP from base to lane or base to bot, you're missing at least half a wave. Um, plus, of course, the extra wave for, for doing it. So you're missing the half wave plus another half, one and a half. So let's just say 200 gold. So if you if you TP, you need to get either um, four assists or a kill. Um, or, you know, two assists and then a tower or whatever. And remember, you don't have to get them. You don't need to get the four assists. You don't have to get the kill. You just need a kill to happen for your team. And also remember that if you're TPing bot and then your ADC gets a kill, right? And the, the ADC gets a kill and it's nothing to do with your TP, you've lost 200 gold for nothing, okay? But if the ADC does get a kill, then you've given your ADC, you've given your ADC um, 300 gold and you've lost 200 gold. So you're basically giving your resources in the same way that, you know, if you're playing top lane, if you're playing mid lane and your ADC comes mid to like shove and get the tower, if you give them the CS, then you're helping your team because you're giving your carry gold, which is what you want. Um, but you're, you're weakening yourself because every CS your ADC takes is CS, whatever. So TPing to your lane makes you stronger. TPing 
to bot lane and things like this makes your team stronger, unless you get the kill, in which case, like, if you can TP and 100% get a kill, then you've made yourself stronger and your team stronger. So generally, when you TP, if you can get the kill, then in, in solo queue, it's beautiful. If you can give the, the kill to your AD carry, that's perfect in team play. Uh, but in solo queue, it's all about you getting fed, you carrying. So in solo queue, whatever, in this situation, if Jace does TP, he wants to give that kill to probably himself. Because the Velkos isn't really a hyper carry. Um, actually, no. No, I disagree. I think, yeah, Velkos scales better with items than, than Jace and Aatrox, which have high base stats. Generally, if you have really good early base stats, then you don't scale. Not because It's not you don't scale because you have the base stats. It's because Riot balances it so that if you're super strong early, you don't scale. Because otherwise, you have a situation like Cassidy in Season 4. Or Cassidy now, actually, is pretty strong. Um, or Yasuo in, like, Season, season 5, where... They're super strong early, and they scale really well. Like Caitlyn, you know, in Season 4, Season 3. Um, if something is super strong early, and it scales well, it is the perfect champion for solo queue, perfect champion for fives, perfect champion in general, because it doesn't have enough weaknesses. You need to be, like, oh, okay in the mid-game and then scaling late. Or, like, you know, okay early game and then scaling late. But if you're really good early, like Jace, and you also scale really well... But yeah, so I think Velkos probably... Yeah, Velkos definitely scales the best with items, because scaling can mean with items or without, but in terms of gold scaling, scales with items, Volkos 100% hands down, Aatrox, Sejuani, Jace, Shen, 100% give all the gold to the Volkos, he'll have the best items. However, you don't have any good scalings relative to what is good in League of Legends. Like, Virus is, al is always, in this team, in this situation, always going to have the best scalings, followed by Rise. So, you know, that's why you'd say, oh, the later the game goes, LPL has a better chance, they outscale. What that means is that they scale the best with gold, and if everyone has six items, then red team wins. So Jace here deciding not to, so this basically means he's trying to get some gold onto the Velkos by not TPing top. That's that's the, the decision. Or for his, he's trying to help his team, but cuck himself, because he's already winning, but he's going to fall off. And that's the other thing, is if you're playing Jace, or like Lee Sin, or Zed, don't take the kills, because taking the kills... Um, mean you have to carry. If you get that gold and then you don't use it because you you can't use 300 gold as well as the Velkos, right? Then you've actually just um, entered basically a kill to your team because you wasted 300 gold. Like, if you can assassinate ADC, um, you know, as a 0-4 Z, then you don't need that kill, right? Because you can already do it. If you can already do your job, if you have enough money to do your job, whatever. If you're someone like Caitlyn or Varus, you can, or Kaisa is the best example, you can always have more money to do your job better. But it gets to a point where stuff like Jace and Zed and Aatrox and even Sejuani is like, well, there's more job, you know, there's more gold will get me do my job better, but not as well as Vokos. So Jace has basically said, I don't want the gold, I'm going to give it to my team, which I don't know about that one because that decision, right, means inherently that you're trying to scale. You're trying to go, hey, I'm already so strong early, blah, blah. But I think they need to almost double down on the fact that they have such strong lanes and shit on the, on the map. So this is probably an adaptation based on the fact that they're, um, you know, down in gold. And they've given up the three kills early. Um, they're actually ahead in gold, but they've given up the three kills early. So maybe this is an adaptation. They're like, fuck, you know, we're not as strong as we need to be. So I'm, this is what I'm doing. But I don't know about that one. I think I think you should, you know, if your plan is to go in and shit on your lanes, then Jay should be TPing to his lane, you know? It should be selfish. Okay, so Giovanni on a ward in the enemy jungle here. Like, yeah, every second that goes past that um, KT isn't just winning the game is a win for China. For, for uh, in, Invictus? I don't even know what they're called. IG. Igneous Gaming? I don't know. Okay. So they're top now looking to siege. They get the kill on Ryze, that's really, really good. Let's see that again. So Ryze playing super safe under his tower, decides there's no way Sejuani's here. And you see the difference between Score and Ning? Um, you see the difference? Notice how when Gragas ganked, he like hesitated. No hesitation here. Bang. There's no hesitation there. As soon as in range, bang. Maybe there's a little bit, but not as not nearly as much as that Gragas. It's the same when you see Ash. Korean Ash players are the best in the world because every time there's a guy in your range, they throw it. Like you know how when you play a bot game, you know, um, like just bots, you know, co-op versus AI, and the bots 
there's those moments where you're like, they're scripting, you know, like they dodge everything and they throw everything immediately inside the frame. That's, that's almost what Koreans do. Like Chinese people and just people in general are so worried about missing the skill shot that they delay the throw. But what Koreans do is just as soon as there's someone in range, as soon as you can hit that skill shot, they throw it. And that's what, you know, you see there. I think if score threw it a bit earlier, then there was higher chance that Ryze can live because, you know, he gets the damage later or whatever. And, you know, uh, Smeb wasn't as close. And there was no indication that if Ryze walked up that far, he thought Sedge was there. So he's obviously going to walk up a little bit further anyway if, if Jace backs up. So I think it was definitely fine to wait. And so I'm, it's not, well, it is, it's not really a mistake to, to worry about. Like, it's so minute that I think it's fine. <laughs> Herald exists now, so they want to start looking at that. Dragon's almost uh, also up. Looks like they're diving bottom here. Shen ulti. Yeah, I mean, with that play, it made sense. Um, basically, it made sense. But you need to throw that virus ulti. Like, Morg... Does Morg have E? I can't tell. But Yeah, Morg had E. So, what should have happened is here... <clears throat> What should have happened here is just straight up Morg E, and then he just walks up. Velkos, as we saw, walked up to throw the Q, because obviously, you know, the closer you are, the higher chance of hitting. And then Virus throws his ult, and then Velkos is here, and he either flashes or whatever. But then, with that in mind, Virus could do, like, a flash R, and then, you know, deft flashes, and then he mad lifes him here, or something. And that would make, you know, the, uh, the coming from... Gragas here more effective. So here should see 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 you see how he makes these little walks these little walks He should be R flashing here with prediction and also oh That's CC. Oh didn't ult. He missed a chance. That was a free ult And if he ults then Morgana hits the Q like straight up just should have ulted 100% And now as a result and this is the thing is is people are so scared at this level of making a mistake that they create mistakes. You never see this in Korea. That's what I was saying before about, you know, Greg is hesitating. You see now, Virus hesitating. You can't hesitate. This is why Koreans are the best right now is because they're so disrespectful. Like, you can't hesitate. By hesitating, you give your opponent more time to dodge. Yes, you give yourself more time to hit, but it psychs you out. It's not worth it. Just throw. Like, because Virus was too, too scared to throw there and flash throw or whatever, because he's too, too scared... Um, everyone's overextended and they all get caught. And that's all because Virus didn't throw. And Morgana didn't shield early enough as well. It's not just the Virus, it's because Virus didn't throw. But the reason Virus didn't throw wasn't 100% Virus. It was also a bit Morgana not shielding him. Um, so yeah, definitely mistakes made. And also, even before the flash throw... Uh, sorry, even after the flash throw was missed, um, Gragas' cask was a, literally an undodgeable ult. Because if you, if you are cc you can't flash. <coughs> so that's really really good for um, KT but here oops so we've already said he should be flash throwing but then here that's a hundred percent flash throw or even just a throw a normal throw bang he can't flash it and then it all hits so either a flash throw or just a throw. I think just a throw would have worked, but if in doubt, flash throw. Either way, definitely terrible play by uh, IG there. Okay, taking Dragon. That's good. Scuttle still up for another two and a half minutes. So they should definitely be looking for Scuttle. Who are they going to send split pushing? No one has TP. I'd probably send the... Sh no, you can't send the Shen. I'd send the Aatrox because I... Th ah! I don't know. It's difficult because... You would send the Jace because he's probably safer to live, right? He has the speed up, he has the range, he has arguably better siege because he has, you know, the wave clear and the poke or whatever. 
But the reason I think Aatrox would be better is because if you send Aatrox bot, he can draw, like, lots of people, and then you get a free Baron, you know? So I don't know whose damage is higher. I would say, in theory, in a team fight, Aatrox's damage should be higher than Jace's. But maybe it's not right now, because Jace has an item, and uh, Aatrox has item BF. Yeah, I think Jace should go bot. Jace should go bot. So that's what they should do. Not Aatrox. They send the Aatrox. Level 12, level 11. Uh, I feel like Jace would be better to send because he's less useful in a team fight. Right? Aatrox is better because he can like 1v5 better than Jace. But I feel like you want Aatrox with the team so you can take the, the Herald, you know. But ultimately, it looks like they're going to group 5 anyway. I think that, that's actually the right decision. Jace is a split pusher right now. Won't be that good because everyone can kill him except Ryze. Like Aurelia... Like, yeah, everyone can kill Jace, especially in, like, a gank situation. So, they get the Herald. They're probably going to throw it down top. Or well, they're just going to do mid. Is it just a mid-Herald? Just a mid-Herald. <gasps> oh, that was so bronze. He didn't. Okay, Aurelia takes the thing. No, that's so bronze. You can't do that. <clears throat> like here. If you want to... Like, if you want to pop your Herald... Okay, and remember that Gragas is here. Okay. If you want to pop your Herald, you would probably go here, dash over the wall, walk up to here, and then stand here facing this way, and then you place the Herald. Right? Pressing whatever key you have. Then the only way to interrupt is these two, and if they interrupt you, they die, right? And also, like, if they interrupt you, then you kill them too, because um, you can ult. And then Gragas, who's up here, can't interrupt you because you're too far away. So that was really, really bad use of Herald by score, which is interesting um, at this level. I, I saw it happening. I'm like, he's not going to pop it now. He's going to get interrupted. Like, yikes, that is so bronze. That is actually really, really bronze. Like, that's pretty big. Like, you just lost a Herald. That's pretty big. You just lost an entire Herald buff that would have been at least half a, half a tower of damage. Like, that would have broken mid, 100%, and then probably tier 2 as well. You could have grouped on it and shoved. <laughs> that's a really bronze mistake. Oh my god, and now this? Now, okay, score must be tilted. That was a 50-50, obviously. Greg is having the advantage because of his Q, but look at this. Why would you do that? You've got no front line. Like, you've got no front line at all. Like, what are you doing? You can see the Gragas too, if he was standing further up. You've got no front line to stop him throwing. He should be over here. Or like here, at least. That's so bad. So, pretty bad. They're still looking for this Baron. I think, yeah, who do you said bot? I would say Aatrox. I don't, sorry, I would say Jace, but... I feel like Jace is going to be pretty weak anyway. Yeah, you said that you, you need that Aatrox in the fight. I feel like he's so much of your damage right now. Uh, obviously, the Velkos is the main damage, but I feel like the Aatrox is so much of your, like, front line and your initial damage and your engage and stuff like that that you kind of need him there. Also, obviously, Jace has TP now, so it's a bit different. But yeah, you got to be rushing this Baron because every second that the game goes by, um, LPL gets stronger because they have Aurelia Virus Rise. And you've got Velkos. Like, it's not even a comparison the later this game goes. But yeah, this is what they have to do. They keep getting picks. And again, you might be thinking, oh, all LPL has to do is not get picked. So why do they keep getting picked, idiots? It's because um, being ahead gives you more advantages to get picked. If you think of it like rolling a dice, okay? Getting a kill is a six. Imagine if there was like a 30% chance of getting a six. That's basically what it is when you have a gold lead and you have a comp like this, a pick comp like this, you have about like a 30 or 40% chance of getting a 
30-35% chance of rolling a 6. That's how you should think about it. So, Vara is completely gone now from this defense. Um, they haven't got a wave, but they have a wave top, and they have a wave bottom. So what I would do is I would send Jace bot, and then I would send everyone else top, and then I would ignore mid. Or you just send Jace mid, everyone else top. I think that's okay. But I would send everyone... I would have sent everyone top to die at the Aurelia, and then the Jace bottom to just get a free tower, and given up mid. <coughs> so we see Gragas ulti again. He, that's how you're supposed to use it in the mid game. People don't realize that. Like, you, like people are too stingy with their ult. You should be pretty liberal. Liberal? <laughs> liberal with your ult. And just kind of throw it out whenever. You know, clear a wave, interrupt a herald. It's all good. You know, the more times you use the ultimate, the more ults you get. Like, if you said to someone before the game, well, you can either ult five times or six times on Gragas, what would you pick? Yeah, this is looking pretty heavily KT favored. Morgana gets picked. Good siege. They still haven't started the Baron yet. I feel like they'll have to recall one more time. I think Velkoz wants his Morello. I think Jace wants his Cleaver. I think uh, I think Aatrox probably just wants like I don't know. What does Aatrox even build? Let's have a look. I mean, obviously this is like a few patches ago, but let's just have a look what he builds. So, ah, yeah, yeah, so Death Dance, that makes sense. Death Dance for top, and he obviously went um, GA instead of Sterex, they're interchangeable on every build that has a Sterex, could also have a GA. Ah, he got all three, interesting. But yeah, he's probably going to go Death Dance. That's what I would think. I was thinking he wants some lifesteal like a Death Dance, but then I thought maybe he goes, like, Hydra, you know what I mean? I was thinking something like that, but whatever. Um, okay, let's keep going. So they're definitely looking for this Barret. <coughs> How do you get this Baron? He said the J spot, he has TP. He's gonna get maxed by the Rise that also has TP. You got the Aatrox clearing top, that's fine. You got good pink wards on the Baron, clearing the vision around the Baron, like Tribush and top lane. Nice, nice, nice. Jay should really be pushing harder because if they show... Like, the reason he's chilling is because he doesn't want people to come bot and kill him. If they came bot and killed him, then his team would get Baron. In theory. So, here we go. This is the fight. that This is what KT want. Um, looking for a pick onto the Gragas. The Shen getting pounded a little bit. Sejuani is done -zo. Oh, the late Shen ulti, it looks like. Yep. And they actually ended up winning that fight. Even though no one died, they won that fight, definitely. Um, where's Jace? Jace TP'd in. Where's Jace? Oh, he's... Wait, so Jace TP'd in and Ryze didn't. That's really bad, actually. Yeah, they lost that fight. But only because Jace wasted his TP. They still get tier 2 mid, but that's pretty bad. So now next fight, they either don't have anyone split pushing, or they don't have TP. So they might just send Aatrox down bot and then... Pray to God that they can get a Baron, because honestly now KT's looking pretty risky, because they're ahead, but they can't get this Baron unless they get a pick, and they can't get a pick consistently, because, you know, LPL uh, have pretty safe wave clear and whatever, with the Rise and the Gragas and the, um, the Varus. <laughs> Okay, so Sejuani clearly wanting to get a pick onto this. See, this what I mean is now they're going a bit too ham for the picks. So they have to, because if they don't, like, they realize, hey, we're ahead, but it doesn't mean anything. Like, you look at the score, 10 to 3, look at the gold, 7k gold lead. If you don't get a pick, you can't take the Baron. And if you can't take the Baron, you cannot win the game. So, suddenly, LCK not looking so hot um, right now. Oof. Aurelia going hard in the back line. Vara still alive. Rai is still alive. Aatrox going down in his uh, pass it in his ultimate. He still has GA, but he's gonna flash out. Here comes the Rise now by himself, and I think they know he's by himself. Um, 
LPL team fighting is so much better than every other region in the world because that's all they do in solo queue is they don't like do macro they just like team fight all the time this Aurelia is actually playing so well like Aurelia is the reason that they're winning these fights yeah that's unlucky I think um I feel like IG are going to win this game now because of that because they've delayed the LCK so much and LCK has no scaling at all <laughs> Gregus gets both camps now. Let's see that again. So they overforced way too hard for that initial pick on the rise. And then this Aurelia. Look at the Aurelia. She just completely craps on the fight. Look at the positioning of Velkos as well. Like, if you look at where Velkos is, um, his, like, zone or whatever of, like, ulti is like this. Right? And even though... Well, like this. No, I'm doing that again. Like, his zone of ulti is like that, or whatever. Um, so he catches everyone, but he wants to be, like, here so he can shoot up the lane. Because, at the moment, it's like a cone, right? Which, it is a cone. His cone is like this, okay? And enemies can be all the way, you know, in this whole zone. But if Velkoz is, like, here, then it's just like this, and you shoot straight up. And Mata can be like here frontlining for him, and all these guys can be pushing in. And then if you still have the Sejuani ult that was wasted and all that sort of nonsense, then it's uh, a lot better. Also, Aatrox still isn't here, he's over here. So he wants to come in. It's just bad positioning. Overforce, they thought they had a pick on the rise by himself, but Morgana was like here, so it's pretty bad. And then the Aurelia just destroys the team fight. Like, the, the Aurelia just pops off. <clears throat> but yeah, this is bad for LCK. It's really, really bad for LCK because they had the advantage and it seemed massive, but we could all tell this was going to happen if, you know, they had a bad team fight. And so I think KT are very, you know, they're in a very precarious situation where even if nothing happens, like even if they go even for the next five minutes, they lose. Um, and even if they get a kill, they might still lose. So they really need this Baron more than ever. Rise is bottom doesn't have TP, now they're going to have TP priority with the Jace, which is nice, you can send the Jace bot, and then everyone else can go towards Baron, but, I don't know, I mean, there's a lot of uh, delaying that can come out from the LPL, remember, every second that the game is not over, and this is going to be on the minds of the LCK players as well, every second that they're not winning this game, they're losing this game. So they're going to get this Dragon, but now they give up complete control of Baron, so they can't, like, you see what I mean? They go for Dragon, enemy team goes for Baron, so it's like they can't even do that. Now they're going to peel off, surely. Gragas ulti. Oh, there's going to be a fight. Okay, it, whoever wins this fight is going to win the game, or they should win the game. Okay, the Aureli is gone. That's actually really, really, that's really, really big. Okay, yeah, KT, they're so lucky. They're so lucky. I don't know how that happened. We're going to watch it again. But holy shit. That's so lucky for KT that they won this fight because they lost the game before this fight and they shouldn't have won it. They were set up to lose that fight the same way they lost the last fight. Wow. Let's watch the replay of that. Oh, we're going to see a replay. Okay, we'll, we'll just do the Baron later, but let's just do this fight. This is, this is important. This is so important. So let's have a look at the setup the execution, and all this other nonsense, so, okay. Okay, so the setup's pretty simple. You got the whole team from, um, you know, LCK, they're all here, they were coming from Baron. It's five here, four here, the sneaky, sneaky Aurelia, okay? That's the setup. So, these five guys are split, so what IG wanna do in theory is they wanna break off the Baron Okay, and they want to catch these three before the other two get there. That's what they want to do. So the setup to the fight is these guys want to fight, but there are, there's only three of them. And they can't really wait. Well, they could wait, and they don't, so that's actually a mistake, almost. Um, but then Aurelia engages on these three, splitting up uh, those two. So that's what Aurelia wants to do. So just to recap... Uh, Aurelia's... So... These guys want to just peel off the Baron. Ah, now I see the issue. Okay, yeah, so I've already found it. So, these guys should want to peel off the Baron. And then Aurelia wants to, like, split the team. 
so the enemy team is here and then the other team is here right because enemy team is in two parts but what actually happens is these guys run this way and then Aurelia executes her part of the plan these guys don't miscommunication Aurelia is dead and that's the game pretty much over so let's see what actually happens so that's the plan so Aurelia wants to isolate these guys and she does it but this is the issue this is where the problems start honestly This is where the problems start, because now Aurelia's here, like, alright guys, it, it happened. You know, I've got the three guys in a line, um, I've separated the team, this is great. But then these guys are like, oh yeah, let's run this way instead. That's so dumb. If, if these guys had just run, like, here, and so they're here right now, and they're 3v3ing, or, sorry, 4v3ing, um, or 4v4ing, because score's here, they could 4v1. So what IG should be doing, so rather than what they want to do, it's obvious they're fucking, they're miscommunicating, they're on different pages. What they should want to do is they should want to be like, from here, they should want to be like, 4v1ing this guy by himself. Then Aurelia wants to like, catch all these guys in her ultimate. You blow up, um, you blow up the, the Sejuani and then you turn onto like the Jace and, who, and the Velkos who are also at the front. If Velkos starts ulting or whatever, you immediately just switch over to her because she's not moving. And then you you eliminate Velkos, you eliminate Jace, you eliminate Sejuani, you win the fight. Because Aatrox is not going to do anything, Shen's not going to do anything, versus probably, like, these three all alive. Maybe Greg is dead and maybe, like, Aurelia pretty low. But you can win this fight if you group up as China and just shit on them. But they don't. Um, so let's see what actually happens. So you see, they're running away. Now they group and try to go into Sejuani, but it's too late. It's too late at this point, because Aurelia is already fucked. So again, the same reason, it's, it's the same thing as before, right? It's literally the same issue all game. Um, you know, the Gragas was too hesitant. The team here was too hesitant. And the Vara Assault and the Morgana earlier, you know, down bot, too hesitant. And as a result of being too hesitant, you miss the chance to win the game. And you lose. Now, yes, I understand. You know, I've been saying all game. But wait, if they're hesitant, that's good. Because the longer the game goes, the more they win. Sure, but not if you lose a fight like this. And the only way to win this fight was either A, to not take it. So when Aurelia comes... You know, when Aurelia, like, walked into this bush over here, everyone should have been like, you know, nah, don't do that, don't do that. But instead, um, she went in here, and then her team went like this. So you've already lost the game by doing that. Like, even if, what, Aurelia runs all the way around and somehow lives and recalls, you lose the Baron, or you lose control of the Baron, or you lose, like, the mid-push or something. Whew. Pretty bad. Pretty bad by, uh, IG here. And then they just get, they just get wiped. So that's basically game now for KT. They're gonna get the Baron, they're gonna get the, the, um, the reset, they're gonna get the mid-push. Watch the replay, but we already dissected it. Everything we just said. They needed to just group and shit on the uh, the Sejuani while Aurelia delayed the rest, but it's not what happened. <coughs> so now they just want to be splitting 4-1 and ending the game. They decided to put the Aatrox in the side lane. I think it's better. I think, yeah, so I, I was thinking about it before, and I told you guys what I was thinking. I think the way it, it breaks down is if no TP on Jace, then Aatrox split, and if TP on Jace, then Jace split. Because TP is sometimes greater than... Like, if you can choose between having Trindamir split with no TP, or having, like, Caitlyn split with TP, sometimes it's better having the Caitlyn split. Even though Caitlyn is a champion, it's nowhere near as good. But you have to weigh up the different variables and stuff. But the weighting of TP is super important for splitting. Or something like a Pantheon ult, or a Scion ult, or a Talia ult, or whatever, or a TF ult. Something that can make you rejoin the team, essentially. So it looks like they get another pick on the Aurelia. I mean, honestly... I think she's just trying to make a play, which is fine. I think if you try to, you if you don't try to make a play, you lose. And I think they realize this because there was a point before where the longer the game goes, the more you win. The reason it's different now is because Baron. And the reason is that I didn't mention this before, but KT their siege. Oh, actually, no, I did mention it before, but you might have forgotten. The KT siege was so bad without Baron that they needed Baron. The reason the siege was so bad was because they built for lane. They built for Aatrox versus Aurelia. Obviously, who's going to have the better siege and anti-siege? Aurelia. 
Um, you had Jace versus Ryze, who's going to have the better Siege and Anti-Siege? Ryze. Um, but who's going to have the stronger lane? Jace, Aatrox, Velkoz, and uh, Shen versus, you know, Morgana Virus. So obviously it was literally like attack versus defense, and the defense from IG just wasn't good enough. Defending is a lot harder. It's a lot easier. Like, if you're, if you're like a random gold team or something, obviously I would say play like the Chinese style here, like go for the scaling, because it's easiest to execute... Um, easiest to win with because you basically do nothing you let the enemy team basically it would be like in, in a boxing ring the other guy comes in and he sort of attacks you and you just kind of stand there and take it and then he ties himself out and then you knock him over like like the Simpsons or whatever um, it's the same concept so when if you're a gold versus a gold team then yeah enemy gold team picks like Zed and all that shit maybe they get some kills maybe they feel good but eventually they'll run out of steam and you just win the game um, but when you get to like diamond or so, what you would do is you would pick a team like this, uh, Korean team with super strong lanes. And the idea is as long as you know some basic macro in terms of, you know, win lane, win game and how to snowball and how to get Baron and how to end, which is basically what, what Korea's did here, except for, you know, that one fight bottom that we talked about that was really bad that basically lost them the game, but then they won it again with that, dra with that Baron fight. Um, yeah, it's easier, but yeah, the hardest one to execute is again, that scaling comp because... A gold team can do it versus another gold team because no one knows what the fuck they're doing. But, like, a pro team playing a scaling comp versus another pro team that has, like, an early game comp, super difficult. It is better. Like, if you were a computer and if you were playing perfect League of Legends, um, you would always pick the scaling comp because if you play it perfectly, you can beat any comp. You, you can beat... Like, China can beat this Korean team if they play perfectly, because Korea will not. And even if Korean play perfectly and China play perfectly, China will win. The reason is um, that you know, often you'll see these early game compositions, these strong laning compositions win, because it's a lot uh, easier to execute. Um, it's still very, very difficult, and obviously both teams are really, really good, but, you know, and then they just close the game out. It's probably game over now. Yeah, let's go. So, essentially, the highlights of that game, it was a strong laning comp versus a scaling comp. The Rise got caught out twice, um, like, in the early game. The Velkoz Shen managed to have like that really nice uh, pick in the bot lane <coughs> they kind of snowballed from there they're looking to to end the game some of the lane allocations and the jace in particular like as a champion as a player playing the jace were pretty questionable there was that fight bottom that basically lost in the game but then uh there was the baron throw by um basically yeah not not committing hard enough by um ig also of course there was the bottom lane when varus didn't didn't use his ult or his flash to kill the velkos and when um, Gragas ganked top, he just was too hesitant every time. I think he did it three or f like two or three times, and every time he was too hesitant. So definitely were win conditions for the LPL. I think LCK were the better team. I predicted them to win, and they won. So that's the end of the video, guys. If you enjoy it, be sure to uh, you know tell me in the comments, and you know follow me on Twitter and Discord and all that stuff. But yeah, that's basically it, guys. Um, again, I've chosen this this vod. It's quite an old one um, by today's standards, I guess. Um, I could have picked like an NALCS one again. But, you know, if there's a game you want me to review, just tell me, and that's basically it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.